This entertainment and society news segment of the Suburban Radio Hour is brought to you by Olmex and the Civilizations of the Gulf of Mexico, a fascinating exhibition that lifts the veil on the mysterious, earliest known civilization in Mesoamerica, presented at the Puente Calia Museum until September 15th. And welcome back. This is the Suburban Radio Hour. I'm Beryl Wiseman, editor of the Suburban. Uh, we've just been talking to Jennifer Cox, a uh, great feature writer. Anthony uh, Bonaparte has a day off. Studio with uh, Mark Lidbetter. Mike Cohen is now going to bring us what the highlights are in entertainment society news. And he's got a very interesting interview with the communications team at Bombardier. Mike, over to you. Thank you very much, Beryl. Good to be back on CJD. And I'll start off with uh, renowned classical flutist Yuki Isami. She'll perform at the Montreal International Jazz Festival on July 1st at Club Montreal TD. This is Isami's first Montreal show uh, since releasing Rives, her debut solo album, May 3rd, and performing to a sold-out audience on May 17th. Théâtre de Verdure, located in the heart of uh, Montreal's Parc La Fontaine, has unveiled its summer 2024 program. The uh, venue and its 2022 restored enclosure uh, will host more than 33 shows from all horizons, music, dance, circus, cinema screenings, all starting on June 26. It looks really interesting. I intend to get out there and see it myself. The Dora Wasserman Yiddish Theatres, uh, kickoff of The Great Divide by Alex Sobler. It uh, it's actually starts tonight at the Siegel Studio and continues till uh, June 30th. It's the winner of the 2015 Jewish Playwriting Competition, captivating production about the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire that promises to resonate with its powerful storytelling. Looks very interesting. Uh, this year, the Clavicin en Concert will welcome the prestigious Juro International Happy Scored Competition created by the historical... Keyboard Society of North America. Founded in uh, 1982, they hold this every three or four years in different U.S. cities. It's making its way north of the border for the first time in Montreal. It takes place July 2nd to the 6th at the Conservatoire de Musique de Montréal on Henri Julien. And uh, Do- um, Dorval, uh, Dorval-based Bombardier, the world leader in business aviation, has unveiled a new brand identity anchored by the evolution uh, just before I lead into that interview, a reminder to listeners, go to our blog section at thesuburban.com. You could read a lot more at my entertainment notebook. And please follow me on Instagram and X at Mike Cohen CSL. Beryl, I now go to my interview I did earlier this week with Mark Masluck, who is the Senior Director of Communications for Bombardier. And you can go to thesuburban.com and read our full feature story on the rebranding of Bombardier. Thank you, Beryl. And here is the interview. Okay, well, Dorval-based Bombardier, they're based in Dorval. They're also based in Saint Laurent. They're the worldwide leader in business aviation, and they've unveiled a, a new brand identity anchored by the evolution of the company's logo. And here with me today, I've had a great uh, talk with Alison Beaulieu, who's part of the communications department. I want to thank Alison for all of her help. Thank you, Alison, for your help in putting together my story. Thank you. Happy to be here. All right. And Mark Masluck, uh, born and bred in Dollar de Zormo, and uh, he's the senior director of uh, communications for Bombardier. Uh, Mark, welcome. And uh, maybe for the listener who's not that familiar, tell us what Bombardier is all about. Well, thanks for having uh, us to on today and for giving us the opportunity to talk about Bombardier. We are the largest business jet manufacturer in the world. So when you look at companies in the US, companies in Europe, nobody puts out more than Bombardier has in the past two years in terms of really high end uh, and high technology business aircraft. So really, we're, you're not thinking of connecting you know, a city to a city in North America. These are planes that go around the world. We also have a large business servicing these business jets. So through 10 locations in the world, this is sort of like your local dealership, except we do that on a worldwide scale. And finally, our growing business right now is Bombardier Defense. So that's where we take our jets. We sell them to militaries around the world. So right now, if you're traveling around the world, uh, talking to different armed forces, is you'll see Bombardier aircraft in the UAE and the US with the US Air Force. We've just won a new program with the US Army and and it, we're actually working on a program for Germany right now as well. Fascinating. And one of the reasons why we did the story, which people will mm-hmm. tell people about at the end of the interview, is uh, you've done a rebranding. Uh, what's that all about? Why was it necessary? 
So Bombardier has been on a very long transforma- uh, transformation journey over the past couple of years. We've restructured the business to really shore up the financials. Some of that has involved parting ways with business units and businesses that used to delve into products like trains, like commercial aircraft. Uh, so we've really recentered around this notion of the business jet being the core part of our business and growing around that technology that we are world leaders in. So when we finished that transition, we looked at how Bombardier is now presenting itself on the marketplace. And we realized that you know, to really take us to that next level and look to the future, we needed to have a brand that speaks to how we're speaking to our customers customers today with that voice of the high technology, the passion of the people, and that customer-centric mindset. So taking a brand that goes from a brand that was used for a larger corporate entity uh, that had multiple divisions to a very single-minded, single-focused business around the technology of business jets through multiple streams like the service, the jets themselves, and defense. So that brand really helped take that passion that the people had, the deep relationships that we had with our customers, and just elevate our company with a more aviation-themed future. Well, I'm very impressed. And uh, people who want to get more information they just need to go to the suburban.com where we have a full feature uh, on Bombardier and their rebranding. Um, I want to thank you both. I want to thank Allison for her assistance. And it was a pleasure to meet you, Mark, and uh, keep up the great work. Thank you very much for the time. Appreciate it. All right. Great to talk to the Bombardier communications team today on CJAD, the Suburban Radio Hour. Thanks, Mike. That was great. That was uh, Mike Cohen with Entertainment News and then it- very fascinating interview with the team at Bombardier. Um, I'm Brel Wiseman, editor of the Suburban on the Suburban Radio Hour. And now we're going to well, who the man I always consider Montreal's finest weather specialist, our own Stephen Bellino. Steve, what do we got? Good evening, Montreal. I'm Stephen Bellino. Welcome to the Suburban Weather Minute here on CJD. The key word last week was hot. We had a very impressive heat wave that lasted most of the week, producing dozens of record highs across Ontario, Quebec, and into Atlantic Canada, even Newfoundland. In Bathurst, New Brunswick, the temperature reached 37.6 Celsius on Wednesday. That was an all-time record high for that community, and records there date back to 1872. That's nearly 100 Fahrenheit. Shows you how impressive this heat was. Here in Montreal, a record high of 33.7 Celsius on Wednesday. Also accompanying that was a Humidex, a record Humidex value of 44 Celsius. Very uncomfortable, very oppressive heat. That continued into the overnight hours, producing records on both Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings. On Thursday morning, before the sun even came up, the temperature was already 27 Celsius in Montreal, which is over 80 Fahrenheit. So again, uh, extreme heat, Uh, heat warnings were in place. The summer solstice occurred Thursday evening at 8.51, so now we're officially into summer. Um, That means the days are going to begin getting shorter, unfortunately, almost immediately. Uh, We are looking at a very warm, humid summer, as I've mentioned before. Um, All indications are that this heat and humidity will continue. We had some relief in the form of a cold front late Thursday afternoon into Friday. That moved back north over the course of the weekend, with showers and thunderstorms persisting. As we begin this week, we will see some clearing skies once again, with the ever threat of showers and thunderstorms around as the heat and humidity begins to build once again. It won't be quite as hot as it was last week, but we're still seeing temperatures in the upper 20s, even approaching 30 Celsius in Montreal. Overnight lows around 20 Celsius. That is still above normal. The normal high temperature in Montreal for this time of year is 24, and the overnight low should be around 15 degrees, so we're running way above that. We had some severe weather this past week across Canada. Uh, We are now, uh, according to the Northern Tornadoes Project out of London, uh, Ontario, Western University, uh, we are now confirming 19 tornadoes for the season, six occurring across portions of southern Manitoba and southern Saskatchewan over the last week. Of course, as the heat and humidity continues to build, so this is a thunderstorm threat, and that applies to southern Quebec and Montreal as well. If you need an update on the weather, you can always get it at thesuburban.com under the blog tab, the Suburban Weather page. Until Until next time, I'm Stephen Bellina. Beryl Wiseman here, editor of The Suburban. This is Suburban Radio Hour. And coming up next, we're going to check in with Mark Lidbetter and the whole local sports scene. And uh, he's got a very interesting interview uh, with the Montreal Alliance. But first, 
I'll check in with the CJD Traffic Center. This entertainment and society news segment of the Suburban Radio Hour is brought to you by Olmex and the Civilizations of the Gulf of Mexico, a fascinating exhibition that lifts the veil on the mysterious, earliest known civilization in Mesoamerica, presented at the Puente Caliá Museum until September 15th.